Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video, which is a bit of a sewing catch up style video. I've got quite a few projects to talk about in this video because I haven't done a catch up for a couple of weeks, but I have been busy sewing. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking through what I've been up to. I didn't film a catch up video last weekend because it was half term here. So I had my children with me all week and it was quite hard to find time to film. But I did release a video last weekend, you might have seen it. It's one that I filmed and edited before half term. And it was my first ever sew along video. So I was a bit daunted about doing it actually um, because it was my first one and it's a different style of video. And it did take me quite a long time because I wanted to get it right and I wanted to make sure I spent the time getting the camera angles right so the whole thing was nice and clear which I hope it was and it was a sew along for sewing a pair of handmade knickers which I really enjoy sewing and I think it's a great scrap buster project and I talked about two different um, knickers sewing patterns in that video the Tilly the Buttons Iris knickers pattern and also the Megan ne Nielsen Acacia knickers pattern which is a free pattern so thank you very much if you watched that video and I really appreciate all the likes and all the comments um, of support and saying people had found it useful and found it nice and clear and um, I really wanted to make it a really useful video with lots of tips and to make sure it was nice and clear so I'm so glad it seems to have come across like that. So yeah thank you very much and I definitely would like to do some more sew alongs in the future so watch this space but I'll link that one above in case you didn't catch it um, yeah, and you fancy checking it out. So anyway, I released that one last weekend, but it's nice to be back this week for a more chatty catch up style video. And I have been sewing, although I didn't get as much sewing done in half term, just because I'm so busy um, with the children. And in the evening, sometimes it's just nice to have a bit of a flop on the sofa rather than getting the sewing machine out. But I have done quite a lot of sewing. I did a bit before half term and I've done a bit this week. So yeah, I've got a few things to share. But as ever, I will start the video off with what I'm wearing today. And the weather is still fairly chilly here um, in the south of England. Uh, we had a few days where it was a bit more sunny and it felt like maybe spring was on the way, but today is really overcast. Um, there's a bit of water in the air, so my hair keeps going fluffy. I've had to sort of straighten it a little bit for this video. But I've got on a fairly cosy outfit because it is still a bit chilly out there. So the dress I'm wearing is one of my favorite woven dress patterns. I've got the pattern here somewhere. Um, here it is. It is the Cassiope dress by I Am Patterns. It's a really simple and relaxed, sort of um, easy to wear day dress style woven dress. It's got a gathered skirt on it and then the bodice has this um, raglan sleeve which makes it quite and quick to sew I think you'd have to set in a sleeve. And it's got this cool bat wing feature to the sleeve too which I really like. And you can just pull it on over your head, the neckline is wide enough so you can just pull it on over your head. And it's just really easy and relaxed to wear. It's got kind of like an oversized baby doll vibe. I talked about it before because I really like this pattern. I've got, I think I've got three or four of these dresses in my wardrobe and I do have them all on fairly regular rotation. In terms of the sizing, I've got the pay pattern, which goes from a European 36 to a 46. But if you go on the Iron Patterns website, there is a larger size range available in PDF. So it's worth checking that out too. And the version I'm wearing today is the first ever version of the Cassiope dress that I sewed. So I made this one quite a while ago now and I remember when I made it, I really loved it and I knew I'd go on to make some more versions. And this one is made in a viscose twill fabric that came from Minerva. But yeah, I did get it a few years ago now so I don't think it'll still be in stock there. But I think it's got a really cute sort of print to it. Um, it's got a black base. And then it's got this geometric print in shades of grey. So it's got kind of a, a monochromatic sort of style to it. And I really like that. And I think viscose twill works really well for this pattern because it's nice and drapey. But it's also a bit more cosy and substantial than, say, a viscose chalet. So I think it's perfect for quite a cosy winter dress. And in terms of sizing, I made the smallest size on the paper pattern, which is the European size 36. And that is designed for my bust measurement, so bust 32 inches. But the waist and hip measurements for that size are slightly smaller than me. But there is loads of ease in this pattern. It's designed to be oversized. I'll stand up a bit so you can see how much room there is. So I think it was fine um, going for the 36, even though my waist and hips are slightly larger than that size suggests. And I think 
The only adjustments I made when I was making this was to add a bit of length to the sleeves, which is a classic adjustment I generally make on all patterns. And then I chopped off a fair bit of length um, because when I first made it and put it on, it felt like it was wearing me because it was coming down, I think maybe to around my knees and it just felt like too much fabric, I guess, with an oversized style. But when I cropped it off a bit, um, it felt a lot better and I really like wearing a slightly shorter length and I've gone for the shorter length on all of my other versions since. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on and see the length I've gone for. It sews up really nicely, this dress. It's just so comfy and easy to wear. And then the cardigan that I'm wearing over the top of my dress today is a knitted cardigan that I think I knitted about a year ago or so. And I always enjoy getting this one out when the weather's a bit cooler because it's nice and cosy. And this cardigan was based on a beginner knitting pattern I really like. It's this one here. It is the Downtown Cardigan by All About Amy. I really like All About Amy knitting patterns. I really like the style of them and I find the instructions are really clear. They really hold your hand through the whole knitting process. This pattern was actually the first knitting pattern I tried for an adult knitted garment and I was a bit nervous because before then I'd only made sort of children's clothes and knitted toys and that sort of thing so I was a bit nervous about making something for myself um, but yeah this pattern really held my hand through the whole process and All About Amy also makes crochet patterns as well and there are some really really lovely looking crochet patterns that they've designed. Um, I'm very much a beginner at crochet at the moment so I won't be tackling them anytime soon but I'd love to give them a go once I built up my crochet experience a bit more because they look really pretty too. But yeah, the downtown cardigan is a really lovely um, beginner's knitting pattern. It's for an oversized cardigan that you knit in a bulky yarn, so it knits up quite quickly and it's quite chunky and oversized. And it's knitted mainly in garter stitch with a bit of ribbing um, on the bottom and the sleeves. And it is quite a straightforward knitting pattern um, and it comes together really nicely. And I made my first version as the pattern intends here, so a bit longer in the bulky yarn. But then I went on to make this version and I made quite a few adaptations to make this version. Firstly, I used an Aran weight yarn, so a lighter weight yarn. And I also sized down on the needles. I think it's designed to be knitted in eight millimeter needles. And for this version, I sized down to five millimeter needles, which I think works better with a Aran weight yarn. And then I decided to make it into a cropped version because I thought that would go with quite a lot of my dresses. I'll stand up a bit so you can see what sort of length it is. It also works nice with skinny jeans too, I find, at this length. So it took a bit of adapting the pattern to get what I wanted out of this version. Um, yeah, it took quite a while, but I'm really happy with the end result. And I think it's still got that sort of slightly slouchy, relaxed look to it without being really oversized in the chunky yarn. And the yarn I used for this version was a Wool in the Gang yarn. Um, yarn. It's their V1 Merino yarn which is 100% merino and I made it in this, as you can see, this sort of dusky pink colour that I really like and I think it works quite well with the sort of shades of grey in this dress. So yeah, I always enjoy getting this cardigan out. It was definitely a labour of love and um, figuring out how many stitches I needed with the different size needles and different side of yarn, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It felt like quite an achievement when I finished it. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. So I'll move on now to showing what I've been up to over the last week or two on the sewing front. And the first thing that I wanted to share is a new make. It's a dress I made for myself and I really enjoyed sewing it and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I made it using a pattern from this book here, the stretch book by Tilly and the Buttons. I made it using my favourite pattern from this book, which is the Freya top and dress pattern, which is here. So it's a really lovely jersey top and dress pattern and the dress has quite a fitted waistline and then it sort of tapers out into an A-line style skirt and it's got long sleeves and the classic version is made using this sort of stand up mock neckline. But for my version that I've been sewing up over the last week or two, I decided to revisit a different variation of the Freya pattern that I hadn't made since I first started sewing. And I really loved it when I made it at that early point in my sewing journey. And I don't know why I haven't revisited it until now, but I suddenly I felt an urge to revisit it. And um, I thought it'd be a perfect dress for while the weather's still cool and I'd really enjoy it sewing and wearing. And the variation is this one here, it is the cowl neck freya. I love a cowl neck and I think it's really nice and cosy for a wintry dress. So I was really keen to, yeah, revisit it. And it was a bit of a blast from the past since I hadn't, yeah, made a cowl neck freya for so long. So I'll show you my version. Here it is. 
Um, it's a bit hard to see the cowl neck, it's a bit floppy. <laughs> um, it looks better when it's on. I'll show you a picture in a moment. But here is my new cowl neck Freya dress. It sewed up really nicely and I made it in this cotton jersey fabric that came from Minerva. And I was gifted this fabric in exchange for a post, which is now up on the Minerva website. So I'll link the fabric and I'll also link directly the post. Um, in the post, I'm talking a bit of detail about how I found the fabric to sew with and the adjustments I made and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I'll link it down below in case you fancy having a read. But it's a really lovely cotton jersey fabric with a navy base and this dotty print on. And I think it comes in quite a few colours. There are definitely a few more pastel style colours. But I really like the idea of the navy for a wintry dress. And it's a really lovely soft cotton jersey, so really nice and comfy to wear. So that's my Freya dress. It's got the cowl neck and then the sort of A-line skirt at the bottom. I made um, the straight size two for this pattern, but I did make a couple of adjustments. Let me have a look at the sizing. I think the straight size two is designed for my bust and waist measurements, and it might be a size one inch smaller on the hips. So I think it's designed for a 35 inch hip and I'm a 36 inch hip. So what I decided to do is because I already had the pattern traced out from a few years back in the straight size two, is I cut out in the straight size two. And then when I sewed the side seams, um, after I'd sewed the um, waist, um, I just tapered out the seam allowance and made it a little bit skinnier down to the bottom, just to give me that little bit extra room in the hip. So I think I used the 1.5 centimetre seam allowance along the arms and down the side to the waist, and then I tapered out to maybe a one centimetre seam allowance just to give that a bit more room at the bottom around the hips. And that seemed to work really well and save me having to kind of either trace that again and grade out or maybe add a bit of um, paper down the sides to make sure I got an even cut on it. But yeah, the grading out of the seam allowance just worked well. And then I also just made the arms a bit longer as ever. Like I mentioned on my Cassiope dress, it's a standard adjustment for me. I like having nice, cosy, long sleeves on garments. So yeah, it came together really nicely. This version does take a little bit more fabric, um, I find, than the mock neckline, just because the cowl neck is um, two pieces of fabric and they're quite large pattern pieces. So you need to factor that in if you're making the cowl neck version. But I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. Um, it's super comfy. Um, and I really love the cowl neck. It's nice and cosy. I'm really glad to have visited it. And I think in this sort of navy dotty fabric, it'll be kind of a timeless dress that I'll hopefully be able to wear for quite a while into the future. So yeah, I'm really glad to have revisited the pattern. And yeah, really happy with my cowl neck Freya. So the next thing that I've got to share is another new make. But this isn't something I made for myself. This is a make for my daughter. And it's not actually a garment. It's actually a little bag. So it's a slightly different style of sewing projects. I generally mostly sew garments, but I really enjoyed giving it a go and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So my daughter asked me a few weeks ago if I can make her a little bag of some sort, but she didn't specify too much as to what she wanted. So I thought I'd have a look on Google and see what I could find. And I came across a pattern that looked like it would be right up her street. And it was a free pattern too, so that was great as well. And this is the pattern here. It is called the Little Cat Friends Bag and it's by a pattern company called Below the Kohai. They're based in New Zealand and they do a lot of garment patterns for adults and children as well as this cute little bag. I will link their website down below. And this Little Cat Friends Bag is actually available as other ad animals too, but you can purchase a version with other animal variations. And I think that version includes a horse and a dog and a mouse and I think a bunny with so sort of stand up ears and a bunny with flopsy ears too. But the cat variation is the free one, which was perfect for my daughter because she loves all things cat and kitten related. So it's a cute little bag with a strap so you can wear it on your shoulder. And it's designed to be made in sort of medium weight woven fabrics like cotton or linen or chambray. And it's also lined and they recommend you use a slightly lighter weight woven fabric for the lining. See, it's really, really cute. Um, and you need to do some embroidery on the front here to get the cat's face. And I haven't done a lot of um, hand embroidery, or machine embroidery actually, any embroidery really to date. So it was quite fun doing that. And the instructions in the pattern are really clear and they really take you through how to do the embroidery stitches really well. So I found it really enjoyable actually. I borrowed a bit of my son's um, um, son's um, thread that he's got a little um, cross stitch kit so I borrowed the black thread um, for the bag so it's quite a thrifty make actually because I borrowed the thread from him for the cat face and then all the other bits I used out of scraps I had left over from other projects because it's only a small bag so you don't need a lot of fabric 
So here is my version of the little cat friends bag that I made for my daughter. So I made it in this pink fabric I had left over from when I made my daughter a quilt and the lining fabric is also left over from when I made the quilt too. As you can see it's this sort of unicorn fabric and it's got a little velcro opening and then it's got the cute little embroidery on the front and these lovely little cat ears. And I made a couple of um, changes from the how the pattern is designed to be. The pattern is designed to use little felt pieces for the ears, but I decided to use the lining fabric because I thought it would look quite sweet. So what I did was I cut the pattern piece slightly larger because the felt doesn't fray, so you just cut it the size you want. But I made the pattern piece slightly larger and then I just turned under the edge and sort of top stitched the, around the edge of the little ear pieces just to keep the lining fabric nice and neat so the edge is all sort of tucked in. And the other thing I did was um, for the strap, I just used more of the actual cotton fabric. I think the pattern specifies you should buy some sort of actual canvas for the strap, but I thought, well, I wanted to use what I had first of all. I didn't have any canvas strap, and I just thought it would look quite sweet all in the pink. So, yeah, that's how it turned out. It sews up really nicely. It's quite a nice size to it in there, and it's all lined, and it just comes together really well. The pattern is written really um, clearly. It's a great little free pattern. I'll link the pattern specifically down below as well as the Below the Kohai website. So. Yeah, I really love how it turned out and my daughter's really pleased with it too. So it's a really nice, fun project and actually came together really quickly. And yeah, I'd quite like to try a bit more hand embroidery because I did have fun making this little cat face on the front. So yeah, it's another new make that I worked on over the last couple of weeks and it was nice having a bit of a change from dressmaking. I sometimes feel like I'm more confident on dressmaking because I've done more of it. But when I do other little sewing projects, I really enjoy them too. So I should probably try more really. So yeah, a little cat bag for my daughter. So the next thing I've got to share is another new make. I think this video is mostly makes that I've been sewing and finishing over the last week or two. And this one is another one for my daughter and it's a garment this time. So she's got her birthday party coming up in a couple of weeks and it's going to be a bouncy castle style party. And she asked me a while back if I can make her a dress to wear at her party. So I wanted to make something that will be sort of cute and pretty, which is sort of what she wanted, but also practical and comfy so she wouldn't overheat and it'll be nice and comfy for sort of whizzing around on bouncy castles so that was the plan she asked me quite a while ago and we ordered the fabric quite a while ago and you'll recognize this fabric if you've been watching my videos this year because I actually bought enough of this fabric to make a dress and also some pajamas because it was quite such cute fabric I thought it'd be nice to sort of yeah enjoy it in a few different garments so I made the pajamas a few weeks ago there's a little long sleeve pair and long sleeve trousers, long sleeve top for the colder weather. And I wanted to get them sewn up first so she could enjoy them while it was still cold weather. And she needed some sort of new ones because some of her old ones are getting a bit too small. So I made the pyjamas up a while ago and now I finally got around to sewing up her dress ahead of the party. So for her dress, I decided to hack a t-shirt pattern and make a little t-shirt dress. And I used a pattern that um, she really finds comfy and it's nice little fit on her. And it's this pattern here. It is the Kids ABBT by DIBY Club. It's a free pattern. I'll link it below. There's also an adult version that's free too. And the kids version is just quite a basic sort of um, crew neck style t-shirt. It comes in quite a wide size range. I think it goes from 18 months up to age 12. And you can make it either in a regular fit or a slim fit. And I've always gone for the regular fit because I find that even that is fairly slim fitting as it is. And it seems to be quite comfy and fits well on both my son and daughter. So I traced out a size 7 for her. Um, I think I've been using the size 6, but I wanted to make this dress a bit more room in. She is turning 7 this year. Um, and I basically cropped it off, added on a gathered skirt and a little ruffle on the bottom. And here is how the dress has turned out. So like I said, you might recognise the fabric. It's a really cute um, cotton jersey that I got from Minerva. It's got a pink base and all these really cute little kittens on. And I think it's kind of designed to be a Christmassy fabric because they're kind of in stockings and there are little fairy lights and things. But I think it's pink and colourful and it's not too obviously Christmassy and she really loved it. So I thought it'd be really cute for a little party dress. So there's an optional patch pocket included in the pattern. And um, yeah, my daughter and son love a patch pocket. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had on little cat that looks like he's going to a party there with a little party hat on. Um, for the patch pocket. I think my daughter actually chose which, which cat she wanted on the pocket. I made the short sleeve version so it's nice and um, not too hot because she'll definitely get hot when she's bouncing around. And then I added on the skirt and little ruffle on the bottom. 
So I just draft those myself, just using like a square and gathering them in. I can't remember how much I gathered them in. I didn't gather them in loads. It's not like a really gathered skirt, as you can see, because I didn't want there to be too much fabric to make it too sort of bulky um, if she's bouncing around. And it's not too long on her either, so it shouldn't get caught too much under her knees if she's bouncing. So yeah, it's a sort of party dress design for a bouncy castle, and she's really pleased with it. I haven't got a photo of her wearing it, unfortunately, but um, yeah, she's really pleased with it. And I also managed to squeeze out a little pair of matching pants as well. So yeah, she'll be all coordinated on the party day. Not that anyone will see, but we'll know. <laughs> and she's happy with that. So yeah, that's my latest make for her. And I did use a little bit of top stitching in hot pink on the pocket, which I thought was quite cute. And it just came together really nicely. It's a nice, simple pattern, and nice and comfy. And I'm hoping she'll get a lot of wear out of it in the summer as well, not just for a party. So yeah, another new make. So the next thing I wanted to share is my most recent sewing project that I just finished yesterday. And there's something that I think are really practical that I'm going to really enjoy um, having made. So recently I've been trying to have a bit of a clear out and organisation of my wardrobe and my sort of chest of drawers that has my clothes in. Because I found they got a little bit messy and I was struggling to find what I wanted always. And when I was going through and organising, one thing I discovered was that my tights drawer really needed a proper organisation. I mean, I've known it for a while. You know, just things like when you get a pair of tights out and you can't tell if they're navy blue or black, particularly in the artificial lights when it's not sort of bright outside in the morning, I'd be really struggling to see what I was getting. And I wanted to sort of be able to sort my tights out. So I had sort of navy tights and black tights and all nice and organised and much easier to reach for. And I thought it might be cool to make some little fabric baskets to store the different categories of tights in, yeah, to make it much easier. And I thought they'd hopefully look quite cute too in my drawer. So I had a little look online because I thought there must be some free patterns for a little fabric basket. And I came across a really nice blog post on the Hello Sewing website, which I'll link down below for making fabric baskets. And the great thing about this blog post when I had a look at it was they included a little spreadsheet um, in the blog post and you could actually enter in the dimensions you wanted for your fabric basket and make it just the size you needed. So I had a little measure in my um, tights drawer to figure out how high I wanted the fabric baskets and how wide so I could fit. I wanted three of them and I wanted to sort of fit them all in um, sort of back to front or sort of front to back in a row. Um, and I was able to put in the dimensions and it told me exactly how big a piece of fabric to cut out to make these fabric baskets. So it worked really, really well. So I sewed up my three little fabric baskets and they're a really fun sewing project actually. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I do mainly sew up garments and I'm always a bit nervous somehow of trying other things but actually they're really straightforward and a lot of fun and here are my little fabric baskets here's one of them so they've got a sort of square base and then um they're lined and i just use the same fabric for inside and out and then you're supposed to interface both the lining and the outside fabric but i thought i don't need them to be that stiff because the tights will give them shape so i only interface the outside fabric and that's worked fine and then on the tutorial on the blog post it says you can sort of turn over the top a bit like this to add a little sort of cute edge. But I decided I wanted to just make them really simple. So I did in the end to get the lining to sort of stay, which is top stitch, as you can see around the top. And it stays nicely in place and it's the perfect sort of depth and height and width for my drawer. So yeah, there's the one version. And I made them in a couple of other different um, fabrics, the same category. So this sort of white one with little black hearts and the blue one with little black hearts. The blue one has got my navy tights in, so that's quite easy to remember. The little pink one's got my black tights in. And then the white one's got a load of random sort of tights in, sort of um, opaque tights and yeah, random elf tights, all sorts in there, all my mishmash of other ones. And they fit really nicely in the drawer and they were good scrap busters too. I made these out of fat quarters I had left over from when I made my daughter's quilt. Um, I bought, I think I bought too many fat quarters because I wasn't sure how many I'd needed. So I ended up with a few left over and I thought they were really cute and it was a nice way to use them. And each of these fabric baskets took one fat quarter. So yeah, really nice way to use up some fat quarters. So yeah, it's just a really fun little sew and I'm really happy with them. And I'll put a picture up so you can see how they are in my tight straw. And they just make it so much easier for me to find what I want in the morning now. So it was a nice little speedy but practical sew too. So that's what I've been up to over the last week or two on the sewing front. Um, and it's been really nice to have a real variety of projects. I really enjoyed having a go at the hand embroidery on the little cat friend's bag. That was a lot of fun to try that new skill. And then I really enjoyed sewing up the fabric baskets I made for my tights too. I wasn't expecting to enjoy that project so much. I thought it'd be more of a practical make that I wouldn't enjoy, but actually I really enjoyed sewing up those little baskets. And I think they'll be so practical and make my tights organisation so much better. 
and then obviously I've been working on a couple of dressmaking projects too which is always enjoyable and yeah I really enjoyed working on both of those and really happy with how they both turned out so it's been a couple of fun weeks on the sewing front and I've got a few ideas for what I want to do next but I need to sit down have a look at my fabrics and plans and get planning for my next project which will be good so thank you so much for joining me for this video and um, please do give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and um, if you're an existing subscriber then thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and if you're new to my channel then please do subscribe and press the bell icon too so you'll be notified when my future videos come out but thank you so much again for watching i hope you have a lovely day and i'll hopefully see you again for another video soon bye